I'm going to try something crazy. I'm going to try to get people who are pro-capitalism and who think that capitalism is the only functional way of organizing society, which, I mean, just look outside your window for like half a second. As a leftist, as an anti-capitalist, I want to try to get those people to understand what we mean when we talk about work. common argument from people who are pro-capitalism is that if people aren't coerced into working, you know, under the threat of homelessness, which is the primary problem that we have with capitalism, well, there's, there's some others under that umbrella, but one of the main problems with capitalism is that you are coerced into working most of the time under conditions that are harmful to you and to society and the environment and to other people, because if you don't work that job, you are living under the threat of homelessness because we don't have any social safety nets in capitalist societies. I mean, there's some very weak ones and, you know, obviously some places have more than others. But generally speaking, if you don't get a job and sell your labor to a capitalist, somebody who owns the business that you are selling your labor to, you will be homeless because there's, you can't just get a house for free from the government. You can't just do that. So cap pro-capitalists think, and note that I don't say just capitalists, because it's important to understand that um, just because you are pro-capitalism doesn't mean you are a capitalist. If you sell your labor to survive, if you get paid a wage, you're not a capitalist, you're a worker uh, who has been brainwashed by capitalism. But anyways, genuinely trying to offer an olive branch here if you're curious to understand what we mean when we talk about these things. So you live in a capitalist society and you have to get a job, right? Because you, you gotta live, you gotta make money to live. There's, there's no other way to do that. So that means that because of that coercion, that systemic economic coercion that you're living under where you have to sell your labor in order to survive and meet your basic biological needs as a, as a primate, because you can't just live without a house um, or, or some sort of shelter, you have to sell your labor, right? So you have to find a capitalist who is willing to hire you and, and buy your labor, basically. Because when you get a job and you're working for a corporation or a company or business, you are selling your labor to them and they, they pay you some money. So they're basically buying your labor. That's called wage labor. If that's the only job you can get because of various circumstances, maybe it's the only job that, you know, it's the best job you can get with your education level or, you know, what, what have you, whatever the constraints are. Maybe your town it doesn't have a lot of jobs. Whatever your job you can get, that's what you manage to get. The fact that you know that you could end up homeless if you don't keep that job causes most people, not all, some people are lucky enough to have the resources uh, and, and education and, and social capital to get another job if their current job is shitty. But most people don't. Um, and they are forced to stay in that job despite the fact that that job has probably at least one thing uh, that is destroying them on the inside. So you might have to stay at that job even if your boss is sexually harassing you or if your coworkers are terrible to you and harassing you. Maybe you know that the company that you work for is doing terrible things to the environment or to the society that you live in and you know that the company is bad but you need that money from the company to survive so you keep working for them. Maybe the job is really harmful to your body. Maybe you have a bad back and you work in an Amazon warehouse and you know that it's causing you harm and pain, but you have to keep that job because otherwise, how are you going to pay your bills? And so you have to keep that job. And so, I mean, side note, as somebody who studies drug use in society for as, as my own career, um, that is the root cause of a significant number of the rates of opioid use that we're seeing today. It's not because opioids are magical and evil and just like capture anybody who uses them. It's because people have to work and their bodies are exhausted and in pain. And it's also, they're in like emotional pain from trauma from our shitty society. And so opioids oftentimes are the only thing that they can turn to to help with that pain in order to work and function. In any case, so you're coerced into this job that sucks that is harming you and you know is shitty. Maybe you know that they're doing evil stuff and you know that it's hurting you and that the hours are, are so long that it's keeping you from seeing your family. You know, it's causing you stress. You carry that stress home with you. And so your family ends up suffering for it because you're too stressed out and tired to interact with your kids as much as you would like to if you didn't have to work that much or you weren't working in such a toxic environment. 
this is what we're talking about when we talk about capitalism being coercive. It's not a free system. There is nothing, there's no freedom in this system. However, one of the arguments that people who like capitalism often make is that if we didn't have this system, then nobody would do anything. Nobody would work. I have some thoughts about this. I think this is this is actually a really interesting argument that people make because I think it betrays a fundamentally authoritarian nature that is learned and not inherent to human nature. And by the way, I'm an anthropologist. My name is Hilary Agro. Uh, I literally study human nature. And there aren't a lot of things that come super instinctively to us as humans compared to most animals, but um, the drive to work together collectively is definitely one of them because we are social primates, we're social animals, and we need each other to survive. It's very hard as a human to survive just on your own, basically anywhere on the planet. And so our instincts that we have evolved with to keep us alive uh, as individuals and as a, as a species are to work with each other. So the idea that people just wouldn't work and wouldn't do anything if they weren't coerced to by capitalism, it actually doesn't hold water. And I want uh, to invite anybody who's pro-capitalism who's watching this, you know, welcome. I'm excited to read all of the comments that you're going to leave on this video indicating that you didn't actually um, think about anything that I said. That's that's super fun. I'm really excited for that. But for those of you uh, who are willing to entertain some some different thoughts, I want you to picture yourself at Thanksgiving dinner. Whole family is there, aunts, uncles, cousins, little babies, grandma, grandpa. You're at Thanksgiving dinner and the lights go out. What, what are you gonna do? There's something that needs to be done. Your family needs some help because there's a problem. Are you gonna just sit there and go, well, I guess I'm just not gonna not going to do anything about this or are you going to get up and go check the fucking fuse box are you going to do a thing out of necessity to help or are you just going to like sit there and go well no one's making me work so i'm just not going to do it no you're going to get up and fix the fucking lights if, if it's in your power to do so let's say this thanksgiving dinner that you're having is in a cabin in the woods and it's heated by wood fire fire's getting low there's no more wood beside the fire what, what are you going to do you're just gonna say, well, I guess I guess we're all just gonna get cold now. No, you and your buddies and your cousins, whoever whoever's there, whoever feels like it and enjoys that that kind of work, is gonna get up and go outside and chop some more wood and bring it in for the fire so that everybody's warm. And you know what? It's not gonna feel like work. It's going to feel good. It's going to feel fun because A, you're doing it along with somebody else because social work when it's for a good purpose and to help other people and you're not on an extremely rushed timeline like the way that we are in most jobs under capitalism, it's enjoyable because you're doing something fulfilling, something meaningful and something social. But if you need to cut the turkey and there's no knife, are you just going to sit there going like, well, it's not my job to cut the turkey. Or are you going to jump up and go to the tool shed and get a machete and come back and cut up that fucking bird so the kids can have their giblets? Obviously you are going to do the thing and you're going to be pumped to do it because you get to work creatively to solve a problem and use your skills and knowledge to do it. And that feels good. Our instincts as humans are to help each other, to solve problems. The reason that we have those instincts is because it keeps us alive. It feels good. You get good, warm, fuzzy feelings from doing those kind of things. And that is an instinct that we have. People are not lazy. Laziness doesn't actually exist. That's a topic for a whole other video on just ableism and various things. But the idea that people just won't work and won't do anything, like, sure if people all of a sudden had their needs met um we would all most of us probably need a little break we would need some rest we would need to just chill for a little bit but we're not going to not work forever have you ever just like sat on a couch for like two three weeks at a time like eventually you get bored and you want to do stuff so i promise you you don't have to worry about people not working if you're not forcing them to the only time you actually have to do that is when it's with some shit that doesn't actually need to be done. Ask any doctor or nurse or construction worker if they think that their work has meaning and value. Yeah, because they're doing things that help other people, that are necessities for human beings to live and survive and thrive. 
but ask an office worker if what they're doing is actually necessary and useful. David Graeber talks in his book Bullshit Jobs about how many people are doing jobs that they know are bullshit, but they do it anyway because they're entangled in this system of capitalist coercion. How many of you watching this have done a bullshit job where you knew you weren't really doing anything to help anyone or help society or push things forward or make anyone's lives better? You were just doing it because it helped a corporation make some money. That kind of job does require economic coercion to make people do it but it doesn't help anybody. And most of those jobs are actually contributing to a system that is destroying the environment via climate change, often exploiting countries in the global south for their resources. Does that seem like a system that's worth maintaining? Every single time somebody makes the claim on TikTok or somewhere that, oh, well, no one will work if we don't you know, force them to work. Hundreds and hundreds of comments pour in from people who would love to do work that's actually helpful to their society and community. And they don't have the chance to because they're working in the advertising department at Walmart hating their fucking lives. I have worked a lot of manual labor jobs and I would go back to them in a second if I could make enough of those jobs to actually have my needs met or if my needs were just met and I was just doing stuff at those jobs to help people. I have worked on farms, I have worked in childcare, I've I have done so many things. I have worked on a farm where all I did for eight hours a day was pick beans all day long. Just just picking beans and I listened to podcasts and just like it was hard work. It was like it's hard on my back and whatever, but it was it was nice. I liked it. I can't make a living doing that. I can't raise my kids on those wages, even though some people have to and that sucks and is not fair for them. But I would do that in a heartbeat if I knew that those beans were just like going to feed people. I would do that all day long forever for the rest of my life. And if you don't think that most people wouldn't also be so on board with doing a job that they know is helping their fellow human beings and helping to provide for them and them, their families without the surplus value of their labor being basically stolen by an employer who's going to accumulate it so that they can feed the people at the top of this pyramid who are just as broken and miserable as the rest of us except their addiction is to numbers instead of to the other things that we're addicted to. I'm addicted to my fucking phone. Some people are addicted to meth. Some people are addicted to gambling. Some people are addicted to porn. We're all addicted to something because we're all trying to fill this whole in our hearts that is caused by this shit ass hierarchical society and the people at the top they have that same hole in their heart and they're trying to fill it with numbers go up <sighs> I had to get up and stand around i was getting too angry <sighs> you know what's really sad though is that i don't actually believe that the conservatives who are making these pro-capitalism arguments actually believe them i think that the people who make these arguments fall under two categories one, they are people who are doing fine in this system, don't want the system to change, and will say any old bullshit that comes to mind in order to get those of us who aren't happy with the system to shut up and just, just shut up so that we stop complaining and so that the system keeps going so they keep getting theirs because they're high, high enough in the hierarchy that they're doing fine. But there's another category of person that makes these arguments, and that category of person makes me really sad because it's people who aren't doing well under capitalism, but they have been lied to and they've been sold these lies by people like, you know, Jordan Peterson, Gary V, Prager U, the various prophets of the capitalist propaganda machine. They've been sold these lies because it's comforting in a way for them to believe that everything is under our control, that if people are doing poorly, that's their own individual fault, which is one of the main myths that is created by neoliberal capitalism in order to justify uh, exploitation is that everyone deserves where they are and if you just work hard enough then you can you can move up the pyramid which we know is bullshit but it's a myth that keeps enough people believing in it that we are still struggling to build a mass movement that has enough people who see through those lies to get together and build solidarity so that we can make a better system. These people believe these lies, lies about capitalism being fine and you know if you just work hard and grind hard enough that you'll do fine and everyone who's complaining is just whining and they they just you know people believe these things because when you actually see through the matrix that we live in when you actually understand this system it hurts it's painful you saw me get mad earlier yeah yeah that that'll happen it's it's protective in a way to believe that everything's fine.
most of us are traumatized. Most of us struggle a lot. And it's enough trouble to just focus on your own problems and your own suffering, let alone really sitting with how painful it is to realize that everyone else around you is suffering and that it's a systemic problem. That's, that's hard. There's a paradox because you have to, as a leftist, once you realize these things and sort of get on board with anti-capitalism and anti-colonialism and anti-racism and you know, uh, fighting against all of these systems of unjust hierarchy. I should just say hierarchy. I don't think any hierarchies are just. Come at me. When you start to realize these things, you both realize that you have power, which is a huge responsibility, you know, to realize as a white person that you have white privilege and you have the power to talk to your fellow white people and try to dismantle white supremacy. That's That can be really overwhelming. Um, and also realizing how little power you have. And that I think is the one that um, conservatives, the ones who are, you know, not sort of died in the wall, not, not the ones who aren't that first type that I mentioned, but the second type where you're a worker, but you still believe in capitalism, realizing how little power you have and how people like Gary Vee and Jordan Peterson that tell you, oh no, you, you're in, in full control of your life you can get your shit together, you can do you can do anything you want if you just try. Realizing that no, the system is stacked against you and if you don't have a certain number of credentials and if you don't have family money and you don't have the social capital, you're not going to succeed no matter how hard you work, despite the fact that they throw the few exceptions to this system in our face all the time, that's more of the propaganda. That's, that's painful to realize that there are things that are out of c your control. To realize that black men who get shot by the cops did not fucking deserve it. To realize that nobody who has ever been sexually assaulted has ever deserved it. And that that is a systemic problem that we need to deal with as a society. To realize those things and to actually listen to other people, listen to the struggles of other people, it, it can be really painful. And so I appreciate that that's something that people struggle with. And it can be easier to just be like, well, no, because if we didn't have the system, everything would fall apart because people wouldn't work. My brother in Christ, the system's already falling apart. Capitalism is eating itself whether we want it to or not. This is also because the people who are pro-capitalism aren't really doing all that much to fix the problems of capitalism. They are just acting like it's all fine instead of trying to implement the little incremental reforms that they claim would actually work. Capitalism's gonna go one way or another and we can help midwife it into a new system that actually is focused on the health and well-being of our species and every other species that lives on this planet as an interconnected ecosystem that we rely on also to survive. We can create that, um, but yeah, it's work. That said, oh, this is this is sketchy. I'm walking downstairs while recording. We're doing this. Just because it's a lot of work doesn't mean we can't make it fun. And this is something that I actually want to say directly to my fellow leftists now. It's important for us to understand the sort of like psychosocial barriers that people have to getting on board with leftism if we want more people to get on board, which we do because we need we need more people to get on board. One helpful thing that all of you could do is to stop being a dick to people online who are asking questions. If they're asking bad faith questions, then just ignore them. And if they're asking questions in good faith, maybe don't tell them to fuck off or go Google it. Maybe link them to a list of resources. I have one in my bio. You can link it to anybody instead of engaging with them. In any case, one thing that we need to do is we need to understand these barriers. But we also need to make leftism more fun and pleasurable. And that will be the topic of my next video. Until then, read Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Marie Brown. See you next time. If anti-capitalism is fun and joyful and something that people want to get involved in, and this obviously doesn't mean that everything that we ever do is gonna be fun, but generally speaking, it has to feel rewarding to do this kind of work or people are not gonna to wanna to do it. How do we make anti-capitalist organizing a more fun and rewarding and invigorating space to be in rather than a space with just infighting and rage? Well, that's the topic of my next video.
subscribe to see the next one that I have in the works. Like this video, please share it. You know, that's all really helpful. Subscribe to my Patreon if you want to see more of my videos and read some of my content that's not available elsewhere. And also just to help me do this work. I really appreciate it. You can also buy some diapers for my baby at the Amazon link in my bio. Yes, I do indeed live in a society. But yeah, you can send my kids uh, some diaper. Well, I just one of them is in diapers, but there's also books on there that are helpful for my research. Uh, you can send like toys and food and snacks and stuff for my kids. That's all super helpful as well. Or if you just want to send me a little tip on PayPal, the link is there as well. Stay focused, stay strong, rest, and leave a comment and let me know what is the worst job that you would still do for your community if all of your needs were met and you knew that that job was helping people instead of going, you know, straight to Bezos's private pedo island.